Thank you to our panelists. Next up, The Real Deal, Latinx Youth in Hollywood, a conversation between Efrain Escobedo and Belisa Escobedo. Happy birthday! <laughs> Did I get you? <laughs> I don't know what's worse. That you still believe everything you read in those trashy magazines your mom picks up from 7-Eleven? Or that you're trying to play some Latinx race card when I live in Little Havana and you're a third-generation Floridian whose street accent drops more than her GPA? Once they do that power spell, I think they're gonna kill everybody. Okay, not freak out, but the idea of a vengeful maniac obsessed with getting revenge on Salem becoming an invincible, all-powerful vengeful maniac obsessed with getting revenge on Salem sounds very bad for Salem! Look, I don't know what's going on with you. And I don't know if it's this Levi thing or maybe it's the Caleb thing. <laughs> which, what? Yeah, I found out about that. You knew I liked him, so don't come up to me asking for favors like everything's normal. You know, when people ask me about our place, I tell them how special it is. Waking up every morning to the smell of fresh pastries, walking outside and seeing a line of people just waiting to try our family's food. People who have become our friends. But maybe that just doesn't matter to you guys anymore. Was last night about Levi? Wait, were you in there trying to hurt yourself? Aisha, were you cutting? Actually, Actually you know what? Maybe it is just like that. I don't have a choice in throwing that party, just like I don't have a choice in who I am. This is who I am. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Efrain Escobedo and Belisa Escobedo. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Buenas tardes. Great Hello. to see all of you. Thank you for joining us. I want to start off by just thanking Anamari and the HIP team for the Father's Day present, early Father's Day <laughs> present. So thank you, Anamari. I'm so excited. Um, it's such a treat to be able to have a conversation with my daughter. And Belisa, you've been busy, as yes. we can see. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> And believe it or not, I think it's been several months since I've seen her. Yeah. Uh, the studios have more time with her than I do. Yeah. Yes. Uh, looks good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. So thank you for my Father's Day present and making it out here. I think um, it's a very fitting time to have you here because we were just sharing backstage that um, during your first big casting with ABC's Baker and the Beauty, which we saw in, in your reel, um, you were actually in Puerto Rico, so it was shot mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And that was at the same time as our board retreat uh, in Puerto Rico, and you got to have dinner with the, with the yes. hip board right at the beginning of the launch of your career. Yeah. And yeah. now, several years later, you're back at the hip conference. Back at the hip conference, yeah. It's great to be here. I'm happy. Great. Well, let's get started. Let's have a chat. <laughs> so I promised, and I'm going to keep my promise, that I'm not going to use this time in public to interrogate you about things you don't want to tell me in private, like, <laughs> are you dating? Are you eating right? Are you hydrating, going to bed on time? We're going to actually talk about <laughs> your, your awesome journey. So we can tell you're busy. We saw that reel. You've watched the reel. I just want to start off by asking you, when you see that and you see yourself there, what I see is my spunky little daughter with her you know, Afro-Cubana hair from our <laughs> great grandma, sort of dancing for everyone in the parties and the early school plays. And I can't help but see that. But now that you're launched and you have and building a portfolio, what do you see when you see those images? Um, I think for me, I see not just a future for me, but a future for my cousins, for you know, the younger people, just the fact that I was able to do that, you know, from the background that I come from, you know, I'm not, 
I wasn't involved in this industry at all, and it's a really difficult industry to break into. And I think for a lot of growing up, it was like, yeah, I'm telling everyone I'm gonna be famous, but like, I don't know if that's actually gonna happen. Um, but so just the success that I have had is just proof that it can happen and that we are welcome. We can make ourselves known in the spaces, um, whether or not it's pushing ourselves in the room or being given the opportunity to step in the room. Um, we can get there and you know there is that future for us. Right. So I'm gonna acknowledge and it's we had this conversation a long time ago before you left for college, and I said, you're going into an industry that I, your Tia said, uh, everyone we know has no idea what that world <laughs> is, so we can actually help you and make phone calls and yeah. be your support network. Um, for you, despite knowing that you were passionate about choice, so, so what's the spark for you to pursue the arts versus what was very close to you? Social justice, politics, activism, just kind of, what was your driver spark that drew you to that? Well, I think um, a big thing is that art is so much more accessible for a lot of people. Um, and it, it's so much easier to consume all that information through a piece of art rather than, you know, watching the news or looking at statistics. Like, I know I never did that. Like, you would put on NPR, but I was half listening. Um, <laughs> so, but I learned a lot of our history and the current happenings through the art, through the media I was consuming, through the books I was reading. And so I think it's so important to be in those spaces um, because it's just as, it's just, you're just as able to make a change there as you are in a space like this with people like this and connections like this. Um, and for me, from the beginning, it's always been about the youth, like the younger generation, because I know when I was growing up, I had no one on screen who looked like me except probably America Ferreira, who people still are like, you look like America Ferreira. And I'm like, that's the only Latina actor you've seen. Like, that's what you're telling me. Um, so that's an honor to me to be able to give that to people and that's always what I wanted and um, yeah, I think the fact that I can do that, that's what always um, drove me. I think arts education is so important and I truly always believe that arts like guided me and you know, saved my life. But it, it really can be like that for so many people, especially from a young age. Um, I think it's super powerful. Great. Yeah. You know, you you've been mentioned. You've mentioned two things, and I I want to get your thoughts on because I don't think you and I have actually talked about it directly before. Uh, the first of you, you've talked about seeing yourself on screen, seeing others like you, other Latinas like you uh, on screen, um, and then the other is that this is a tough industry right. uh, to make it in. But first in the, in the seeing yourself, sort of the inclusion, the diversity part, it's interesting because we know there's a lot of activism around needing greater inclusion and represent, right. representation in Hollywood. And I want to get your take on that um, a little later. But you were enamored with the arts from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? You decided yeah. you, that's what you wanted to do since middle school. That was your passion. Everyone focuses when we get to the, to the screen but I know that you went to a performing arts high school. Mm -hmm. um, you can share with us what high school that was, but I want to just ask you now that you reflect back, I don't recall seeing a lot of diversity even in those performing arts yeah. schools and let alone the screen. So if you're, you know, I'm just curious from that very point, kind of what was that experience like for you and how did you continue to move forward if you saw all of the indicators that there wasn't people who looked like you, even in the high school you went to for four yeah. years. So what high school did you go to and then share your um, LA County High School for the Arts. Um, great school, public school, amazing. Highly recommend for anyone with artistic children. Um, and yeah, I think, honestly, I think it was a, I mean, it's an unfortunate thing, but for me it was a good thing because it was only further, like, more motivation and also preparing me for what actually was gonna happen, which is, you know, I, I, don't, 
I mean, you went to go see all my plays. I don't think I was ever cast as a lead um, in anything. Like, very minimal, you know, I don't know, showcasing at that school. Um, and so I think that was very reflective of the industry. It's really hard as a Latina, as a queer Latina, to be seen as a lead in these spaces. Um, and even being able to get that audition as the lead. You know, a lot of what I get sent is the best friend, the sidekick, um, the little sister. But, you know, I think one of the issues is it's not just that we need the Latinas in the movie, especially like a women-driven film. You know, um, we need to lead it. We need to be heading it. It needs to be our stories. Um, because we have a ton of Latino content, yes, but I feel like the stories of Latina women are so constantly um, forgotten and kind of pushed aside. And it's kind of like, you know, like how did the women support these amazing Latino men who have been groundbreaking? And um, I think it's really hard to get our stories heard. Mm. Um, yeah. And so as we move towards that then, you weren't getting much opportunity. There wasn't much that you really connected to and saw in your high school experience. So then sort of what, what after that in, in college sort of, what really ended up becoming your actual pathway? Where did you find the support to really find yourself and then launch into sort of your own creative confidence as, a, as an actress? Kind of talk a little bit about what was out in community. What did you yeah. end up tapping into? Well, I, um, I did end up dropping out of college, which I'm sure my dad doesn't want me to say. Um, it's a gap year, <laughs> multiple years. That lasted forever, She's yeah. She promised eventually yeah. that um, she could I, choose. I did. He said, I give you a year. If you can like, m make some moves in this, then fine. But if not, you need to go back to school. Um, and I think I did pretty good. Um, did, th did that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, because I share this with, with friends often. Did my response, did that response to you coming for me, was that surprising to you that, that I was gonna say, okay, I'm gonna give you that chance, knowing the years and years yeah. we spent doing mantras every day right. and getting ready for college. Yeah. Did it surprise you or, and how did, it, how did it make you feel when we arrived at that? I think, I mean, I'm, I've, I'm always going to be very grateful that you gave me, like that you trusted me enough to give me that time. Um, I think I was surprised at how easy it was. I was expecting like months and months of arguments. Um, but I think you could see how passionate I was. And um, the college I went to, I was there for a year and a half and it was pretty much the same as the space I was already in. I was being overlooked. It was, you know, there really wasn't a community there. So. What school was it? Sorry. Oh, the new school for drama. Um, so expensive. So expensive. Um, and so I dropped out, moved back home, and it was actually through a community theater in Boyle Heights, Casa Cero Uno Cero Uno, Josefina Lopez, who actually also went to my high school, LOXA. She's a LOXA grad. Um, and it was through there that I even found the community. I, I think my dad knows I never really wanted to go to in film and TV because I just was like, it's soul sucking and like, ugh. But, um, and I think I was scared of it as well to make that move into it. So I was feeling very safe with my theater family. But Gaza, really, everybody there, Eddie Padilla, they took me under their wing and were like, no, we're gonna push you to do something greater. And without them, I would not be here. I mean, they got my foot in the door. They were able to get me into those first few rooms. And so I'm forever grateful to them. And it, it really was like I had to go back to my roots, back to my community um, to even get there because nobody else was helping me. Nobody else was being willing to like sit down with me and be like, this is where we can go. This is what you need to do. I didn't even have a headshot. I mean, Gasa was like, oh, let's get you with this photographer and like for free because I was like, I'm not spending money on headshots. So, yeah. There really, it, it really was my community who ended up lifting me up, which isn't surprising at all. Yeah. Well, yeah. the free headshots were great because I was also still paying for your college. Yes. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure we still are. So I'm grateful sure. as well yeah. to Casa Cero Uno Cero Uno. Yes. Um, so you've now done ABC, and I'm curious 
to get your perspective on this. You did Baker and the Beauty on ABC, and then you just, you know, you did, you've done Disney, although that wasn't Latino focused, right? right? That was a Hocus Pocus sequel. Yes. So you've gone from a Latino romantic comedy, is what I call it, on ABC, Baker and the Beauty, and then most recently, you have been, most recently you worked on an upcoming DC Comics yes. film, Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. Which is the <laughs> DC's first Latino superhero. And I don't want to steal your thunder, and I know we're going to share the trailer shortly, but to me, there's, I want to get your take on something. And Eva Langoria, who has been a staunch advocate on the need for not just more Latinos in Hollywood, but the importance of Latinas directing and having the opportunity to put forth, as you said, the stories and narratives from that perspective. Um, and she laments the underrepresentation. And so it occurred to me as I was tracking that work that, so you did ABC, which was directed, I believe, by a Latino romantic comedy directed by non-Latinos. Yes. Um, and then you've yes. done <laughs> Blue Beetle, which actually is directed by Latinos, which yes. has more of inclusion. Right. Right? So. Directed by Latinos, Baker and the Beauty. Directed by non-Latinos, but made by Latinos. Because we filmed in Puerto Rico, and it was all like the gente. That's who okay. made it. But still directed by So, So to what Eva Longoria talks about, I mean, were there any differences in your experience as far as how you express yourself takes, like the actual thing of you kind of making the characters your own. What was the difference, any difference there in the two? Well, I think with, uh, with, I think it's just about being, again, with like your community, with your people. I think Baker and the Beauty, even though we didn't have um, Latino directors, I mean, it was f like, they were the outlier, you know? Like, they were like, oh, I don't feel really seen in this space, because it was just all of us. We were making that our own. So that felt really comfortable. Um, and Hocus Pocus was definitely <laughs> very different. Um, but I think with Blue Beetle, it was so great to get back to that, because we were directed by Angel Manuel Soto. He's an amazing, yes. <laughs> Puerto Rican extraordinaire, he's phenomenal. Um, and he led us into the trenches with this and again shot in Puerto Rico with some of the same crew. Um, and it was a fully Mexican cast, like truly a fully Mexican cast. And um, a lot of it, a lot of uh, filming on set was done in Spanish. I mean, Ankel was talking to us in Spanish, which sometimes I was like, wait, go back, go back, go back. It's Boricua um, Spanish. Yes, That's like yes, that. very fast. <laughs> it's like singing. You're just like, wait. <laughs> Your East LA Spanish was clashing. Yeah, with it. Okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, my Chicano Spanish was really, me and George were like, whoa. Um, but, and it's such a different experience. It's so much more lively. It's so much more beautiful. And it feels more sacred in those spaces because you're creating something so special. And it's not just the whole time we were like, this isn't just for us. This is for our community. Like, this is going to be so awesome for our community. And that, that excitement just drove us through everything else. Well, I'm extremely excited. Um, I think that your perspectives on the importance of inclusion and your real life experience uh, continues to sort of echo and bring to the forefront what Eva, America, Man Wilmer have been really pushing for for years and you're that new generation. This convening, as you know, uh, is powered by not just nonprofit community leaders, but folks in foundations and philanthropy what would you say to them for that younger generation that's going to probably go through a similar path? You know, what can they be supporting? What should they support? I think just, I mean, on, on you know, Latinos in the entertainment industry on that end is just keeping up to date on the content we're putting out, like really going, you know, and this isn't me just probing my film, but like going to the theaters, putting in those views, like we... 
unfortunately, that's what it's about in this industry. So we really need the community to be behind us and like go out and watch our content because that's how we're gonna stay up there. That's how we're gonna get more of us in the writer's rooms. Um, and also like, again, a huge arts education advocate. And I think the more people we can, the more youth that we can get in the arts is the more that we're gonna see ourselves in those spaces. Well said, yeah. well said, thank you. Um, well, I, I, will, I will say to your point about getting in the theaters, that's a great call to action. Again, you know, in a, I, I'm inspired. I was getting ready, getting inspired, and so I saw a lot of recent coverage. But recently in May, Eva Langoria was interviewed on MSNBC. She had a piece on there about flaming, and we just had the flaming hot creator here, the writer. Um, and she said, she made this point about how as Latina producers and directors, like, w we get fewer shots mm -hmm. at a big film than, say, a white director who can throw out three flops and fail and still be getting the investment and money. And so your point about it takes the support of the community to make things a success. Yeah. So why don't you, we're gonna close with your, with your trailer. It's been awesome and yeah. a great Father's Day present to have you here, but I wanna turn it over to you to just share a little bit about the, the trailer in terms of like, what's the, Briefly, what is the premise? What's your role? Who are we yeah. going to see? And it, and then we can cue the trailer and close. Yes. Uh, well, uh, Blue Beetle is about Jaime Reyes, who uh, becomes Blue Beetle. But to me, the movie is about the Reyes family, who um, just like a Latino family, that kid could not do it himself. They, it's a hugely like women-centered film, um, which I love. But I think it's very surprising in the fact that it's. Everybody's a superhero in that movie. We all get our superhero mm -hmm. moments. Everybody. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's and you very different. Who in the film? Oh, sure. Milagro Reyes, his little sister. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll leave you all with the trailer. And yes. again, thank you, Belisa, for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. All right. And I guess. Excuse me, Mr. Reyes. Finish scraping the gum off that lounger or what? Uh, everything right now feels so out of reach. You always land on your feet, bro. You're Jaime. They don't get out much. <laughs> I just wanna rap. Jenny? I just wanna rap. Guard the habits in your life, but do not open it. You went in to get a shop, and all you brought back was a hamburger? Okay, I don't think it's a burger. You haven't looked? What the hell is that? How did you get it to do that? I think he likes me. Ah! Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Oh, man. This ain't what you want. 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 Host acquired. Who said that? It's okay, it's gonna be okay! Oh, 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 space. Free entry systems ready. Wait, 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 no, no! This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Oh, what is going on? I just wanna run. It's called the Scarab. It's some kind of world-destroying weapon. It's designed to protect its host. Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. I, I, I think I cut a bus in half. The Scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. The low you feel for your family makes you weak. I just want to rock. The universe has sent you a gift, and you have to figure out what you're going to do with it. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Let's party. Nice choice. I just want to It's 
just like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. I just want to rap. <laughs> Thank you, Efrain and Belisa. Get ready for our next plenaria.